Hi everybody, today is December 24th, 2021. So, just going to show a little bit here on this sawmill, a little bit of some of the details of how it functions. The saw head itself right there, the plans came from Lynn Lumber. I modified them slightly, but it's pretty, like 90% of what they had. And the original one that I built right there, that one was made with a Harbor Freight motor, 13 horsepower. It's got about 700 hours on it, and it still runs just fine. It will function properly, no issues at all. The reason I made the other one was, there's, there's a couple reasons. One, so that there, the drive, is simply disconnected. All I would have to do would be take that chain right there, loosen it up, take it off of that one, or I could leave that one. I could back it up and put it by and do both. I've got extra pieces of chain and chain links. But anyway, reconnect that, and then I could use this one here, no problems. So I built this other one to switch to a Honda 20 horsepower, and I also gained a couple inches of width on ability to cut. I can cut a full 25 inches wide on this saw, which is decent for a band mill, it's okay. That'll cover most of the trees we've got in our area. But basically, this drive over here, you simply turn this here, and you wanna go forward, and then you use this here, and then slowly go forward. There's a clutch, and then we can go backwards, or you know, go real fast or slow, and then just simply switch that switch to reverse, and back it up. So that's power through and return. Then up and down, we have this here. Okay, that there. Sorry about the camera work here. Anyway, sometimes on these blocks it gets some sawdust build up on it. So we go back down a turn or two and then she'll go right on up. And that's being controlled by that motor there, which drives both of these Acme screws together to raise and lower. And we've got a gauge there that tells us what dimension we're at. So there's the functionality of that. Then, as far as this clamp system, the clamp system, let's go backwards for a second here. It's made portable. This is four inch square tubing, quarter inch wall with elevator T-rail. That is my track. You come over here and you take a look, these rubber flaps help kind of wipe, wipe some of the sawdust off as it goes and underneath you find just a simple machined wheel that goes on there and that's it. So that's how it drives, that's how it goes up and down and goes through. So then for clamping logs, go back to this other side here. We've got a whole series of clamp tubes and we've got, now something about this tubing when you set this up, some of this was an afterthought on the lengths of these, but what you'll want to do is use the same batch of tubing for all your clamps. And the reason being is, when you put this in here, you put this in, this block, and it's got that stop so it goes down, and there's a lot of play, but when it's tilted all the way this way, it should be exactly 90 degrees to this tube right here. This system here, go over, I had sold some barn beams for a guy and these were some pieces that got cut off. He wants to make a couple of tables and uh, this is just these old, old barn beams, just fascinating all the work that they went through to make these things. The notches for different things. This one here still has a piece of a, of a dowel that helped hold it all together. Anyway, this here system, what it is, is you've got a quarter two by two square tube formed into this U shape and welded to these blocks, these quarter inch plates. Two bolts on this side, two bolts on this side. If you ever damage one, four bolts and you can make a new one and replace it real easy. This here is five eighths square, 
cut to a bevel, just not a complete point, but just a little bit. Same on this side. Now, this clamp just simply comes over here. This chain goes into that there and the spring just so you can get a little bit of tension on it. So this part slides back and forth, but you put that there and you put this here. Now on the tubing, the reason being, one time I ordered some steel from Riverfront Steel before they were bought by Auro. And I bought an identical order from Auro and an identical order from Riverfront. What happened was they were the same price, about $1,000. It was some tubing, some angle, some rebar. And if you look at this tubing, and I remember it specifically because this, this batch, um, the quality, this tube, you can, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. It's actually like a parallelogram. It's off pretty far. Whereas you get some really nice, good quality square tubing. And the difference is this here, it's it, the dimensions are off. So when you set and weld this solid block or this block that's going to be permanent, it's got a little bit of an angle, just enough so that this is exactly 90 degrees to that bottom tube. And what that does then, you put one tube in here and you can put another tube over there. Then you slide this one over, do your spring and your chain, and you have just a little tension on it. Then when you're done, be careful, not like I did, and if you run your blade into it after you made a couple cuts, you forget that it's up there. You go to make the next cut. You're cutting three or four inches off of a solid log. You hit that, your blade's completely shot. Throw $60 out the window. Unfortunately, it happens. Anyway, so then, so just make that, if you use the same tube, because I've got a couple of these tubes that are off to the point of when I put it in there, like this here is about nine, ten inches up. I actually had to put an eighth inch spacer up here at the top if I get it to where it's two sides square to hold it. So if you use the same tube and it's all set to exactly 90, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about fighting it. Anyway, so that's how that works. It's real simple. Um, so I hope that helps somebody. Once you get it down to, you have a square edge where you've got you know, you have a cut side here and a cut side coming up, you can take that tube out and it just rests against here. I know that's only five eighths of an inch, but it's just enough. It don't need to dig in. This, these band mills aren't that powerful that they're just gonna rip a log out of there. Once you get it square and it's up against, if it's up against here, good and tight, and you got that there pulled over, this one here, same thing, up against it. Everything is below where the blade will go. The blade, the maximum that it'll go down to is one inch. So there's no way I'll ever cut into these blocks. So that way you don't have to worry about that. But that's the clamp system. That's how it drives. That's how it goes back and forth. The Lynn Lumber plan calls for a little bit different of a clamp system. It calls for, instead of a, a T-rail, it calls for a steel angle. And that steel angle, the top edges are kind of rolled, whereas these elevator T-rails have a nice flat surface. They're machined to really be almost precision. They're, they're pretty close. They're, they're really, really good. And anyway, so there you go. I hope that helps anybody that was thinking about building a sawmill or wants to adjust theirs. Take care, and I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Buckle up 2022. I think we're going to all need our seatbelts on, but that's another story for another day.